And now it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Mike Vincent. Hello, Michael Vincent here. I hope everyone's having a good week. Uh, today, taking a look at Lord of the Rings Living Card Game, a uh, living card game by Fantasy Flight Games. And today I thought I'd do something a little different, uh, and I thought I would take you through a deck tech, taking a look at one of the decks that I've had quite a bit of success with, uh, paired with a second deck as well. So this game is difficult to build decks for, unlike other games, in that Certain scenarios demand specific deck building in order to get through them. I can tell you there have been so many times where I've had a cool idea for a deck or a theme I want to build a deck around and I do that and then I play the scenario and often get smashed. So I have managed to find a set of two decks that I find are very reliable for getting through lots of quests no matter what the demands. So for the next two videos uh, I'm going to take a look at two decks that my wife and I play together regularly and I've gotten through some very difficult quests with this. I've beaten some of the nightmare decks first try with these two decks so I think they're well rounded enough and have good enough cards that you'll find if you're having a tricky time with a lot of scenarios that perhaps you could use decks like this or similar. So I'm going to go through, I'm not going to be able to spend too much time on each card as um, obviously that would take a long time and I don't want the video to be too long but this deck we're taking a look at today is a mono tactics deck and is centered around direct damage so combat is an important pillar of this game almost every quest has you doing at least some combat and it seems with the newer quests that some of the most difficult enemies the way they make them more difficult oftentimes is to either increase their hit points their attack or their defense so by having a deck totally centered around doing direct damage this allows you to bypass their defense which is one of the ways that enemies have become more threatening so i found this deck to be very efficient uh, if you need to clean out enemies with low defense or low hit points you get rid of them right away and can focus on other cards and if there are those big bads with quite a bit of hit points and defense well this deck is particularly effective so keep in mind this deck is not made to do any sort of questing uh, it is not good at putting progress on locations with one or two exceptions but this is certainly a strong combat themed deck so let's take a look at the three heroes Legolas who I've found just is consistently so amazing uh, and you'll see particularly with a lot of the cards we're going to combo with him but Legolas he's my primary attacker he is ranged uh, he's got an attack of three and really I'm just going to looking to attack with him as much as possible the added bonus with Legolas is that you do get the extra two progress every time you defeat an enemy so you're gonna you're gonna find ways in this deck to hopefully defeat maybe even multiple enemies a turn with Legolas and get that extra progress. Now Fallon is maybe not a hero that too many people use. He's nice because he does have a bit of a lower threat, starting threat for a tactics hero. So he has a starting threat of nine. Uh, and he is my quester. Now of course he has a willpower, willpower of one, so he's not a very good quester. However, it's his every time he's committing to a quest, deal one damage to each enemy as, as it is revealed by the encounter deck. So Thalon is going to ensure that every enemy that comes off the encounter deck is already going to have one direct damage on it and that's going to play into the effectiveness of defeating um, enemies in general. Now if you are doing battle questing or siege questing then his stats of two are going to be a little bit better. But he would be a prime candidate for any other decks to uh, buff for willpower just to make them that much more effective. And of course, as you see Baragond, he is the primary defender. He has a great defense at four, he has four hit points, and he also makes the deck uh, quite affordable as weapon and armor attachments cost two less with him. So uh, he's a good way because Tactics doesn't have a whole lot of resource generation. We aren't playing any leadership here, and so he's going to allow you to play attachments and just make your resources more efficient. He is also a Sentinel, so he can block for the other deck which we'll be taking a look at uh, hopefully next week. So let's move on and take a look at the attachments. Okay, so we have three copies of Rivendell Blade. Rivendell Blade is the primary weapon I want to put on Legolas. It's gonna reduce the defense of every enemy by two, and it's really gonna make killing enemies a lot easier. So when I have my opening hand, I'm always excited if I can see a Rivendell Blade, and it's very cheap at one. So this is something that you are looking to put on Legolas. 
Now, the Rohan Warhorse is a new card, but one I instantly put into this deck. I have three copies of it, attached to a Tactics or Rohan hero. This is restricted, but after attached hero participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, exhaust Rohan Warhorse to ready attached hero. So this is going to allow you to use Legolas twice in one turn, as long as you defeat an enemy. So with Legolas' ability, you're gonna put two progress uh, on the active location, and you're also going to be able to uh, ready him for another attack. Now, Spear of the Citadel. I have three copies of this. And this card, of course, I want to equip to Baragond. So this you have to attach to a Tactics character. It is restricted, and you are limited one per character. But after attached character is declared as a defender, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. So keep in mind, uh, Fallon is automatically going to have done one damage to every enemy that comes off the encounter deck, or that is revealed. And if I block with Baragond with a Spear of the Citadel, there's two damage right off the bat. Now the other item you want to make sure you've equipped on Baragond is the Gondorian Shield. Let me just adjust that there. So Gondorian Shield, absolutely amazing. Uh, keep in mind, both of these attachments are free to play on Baragond. Um, attached to a hero, it is restricted, limit one per hero, and attached hero gains plus one defense, plus two instead if attached hero has the Gondor trait, which Baragon does. So this is going to give him a defense of six and make him almost unstoppable in terms of being a defender. So these two are very important and you want to be able to get these on Baragon, hopefully as soon as possible. The next attachment is the Blade of Gondolin. I have two copies of this in the deck. And this is going to give plus one when attacking an orc enemy. There are lots of orc enemies in these various quests. However, where it really comes in handy is after attached hero attacks and destroys an enemy, place one progress token on the current quest. So as opposed to Legolas getting two progress when he destroys an enemy, now he's gonna have three if you have the Blade of Gondolin on him. So that's uh, definitely a nice card to get. We have one copy of Horn of Gondor. This is unique. Uh, attached to a hero, after a character leaves play, add one resource to attached hero's pool. So this is one of the only cards in the deck which is actually going to generate resources. Resources, not really a problem in this deck because almost everything is very cheap. Uh, Baragond allows us to play things for free, but there are a few allies that are a little more expensive, so if you can get this out on the table, you're really going to have no problems with resources going forward. Now I have three more one-ofs for attachments. The Great Yu Bow. Now this is, if uh, I was to remove any card from this deck, it would probably be Great Yu Bow. However, it can come in handy for attacking the staging area. In certain quests, and because this deck is well-rounded and can be used for lots of different types of quests, can be handy when you have enemies stuck in the staging area, or maybe they can't leave the staging area, and you want to pick them off with Legolas. So I do like having a copy. I do have Rivendell Bow, uh, just because it is, allows uh, plus one attack. And it can be nice to use on um, my partners. If I want to give them some ranged ability for attacking, then maybe I play it on my partner's heroes. And of course, the final attachment is one copy of the Black Arrow. Excellent for taking out the sort of boss enemies or the tougher ones. After attached hero declares an attack and Black Arrow to the victory display to give attached hero plus five for this attack. And this also grants one victory point. So there you have a look at the attachments for this deck. Um, mostly ranged for Legolas or used for Baragond for defense or doing direct damage with the Spear of the Citadel. Okay, so moving along to our allies, I have three copies of Gondorian Spearman. Uh, he is cheap. He, yes, only has one attack, one defense, one hit point, but he is a Sentinel, which means I can block for my partner. And most importantly, after Gondorian Spearman is declared as defender, I can deal one damage to the attacking enemy. So again, with Thalon, with the direct damage theme, um, he's going to be able to do one damage, and oftentimes I'm going to try and set it up so that whoever enemy is attacking, if I'm gonna block with him, hopefully that enemy only has one hit point left, it will die, and Gondorian Spearman will be able to live to fight another day. Defender of Ramas, I have three copies of. Uh, an excellent ally for a cost of two, basically because of the four defense. So if you can get one or two of these guys out on the board, you're gonna feel much more secure. You're gonna take a little bit of the pressure off Baragond, and you're just gonna have a lot of good defenders. So uh, Defender of Ramas, always a trusty defender. Now the Knight of Minas Tirith, 
I have three copies of this card, uh, and this guy is mostly here for attacking ability. However, his special ability also does come in handy uh, from time to time. He is one of the more expensive cards in this deck with a cost of three, which isn't too bad, and he's fairly hardy with one defense and three hit points. Uh, he has Gondor, but his response reads, after Knight of Minas Tirith enters play, choose an enemy in the staging area, engage that enemy, and exhaust Knight of Minas Tirith, declare it as an attacker, resolve it as attack against that enemy. So this has two benefits. Uh, oftentimes there are special quests where there's an enemy that can't be optionally engaged. One way to get around that is by playing a card like Knight of Minas Tirith. When you put this down, you're going to be able to engage that enemy, even though you might not be able to regularly. And hopefully, even if he isn't going to be able to kill it, perhaps you'll do a damage and you can deal with it in the combat phase. This also can be nice if I've managed to do enough direct damage and the enemy has a low enough defense, that perhaps this is a way to get a pesky enemy out of the staging area and to immediately kill it. So you don't have to worry about it when you go about questing. So if it has a high threat, hopefully you can deal with it. Uh, but he, in general, is just a great attacker because you're going to have uh, an attack of three on your ally. Now, finally, and probably to nobody's surprise, I have three copies of the regular Gandalf from the core set. Um, just excellent. Uh, of course, he's quite expensive at five, and that's where the ha Horn of Gondor is going to come in handy, hopefully, to generate some extra resources. Uh, but he plays very nicely into the theme of the deck, as he can do four direct damage to an enemy when he enters play. But he's also excellent for um, card draw, which is handy in this deck as well. Um, and you can also reduce your threat if you need to. But uh, nice to have Gandalf to come in if you need him to do damage. And he's got just really well-rounded stats at four willpower, four attack, and four defense. So there's a look at the allies for this deck. And finally, let's take a look at the events. Okay, so four events. We have Hands Upon the Bow. This is something I absolutely want to use with Legolas. Uh, especially if he has the Rivendell Blade attached. So this allows you to exhaust a character you control with range, declare it as an attacker, and take out an enemy, hopefully, in the staging area. And it also gives plus one attack. So Legolas having an attack of three, plus one from this gives it uh, four. Perhaps you have another attachment that might give him a little more attack. So maybe you're looking at five, and with a Rivendell Blade, this also means that you'll be reducing the enemy's defense by two. So considering Thalon has already done a damage, hopefully to the enemy when it came off the encounter deck, there's a good chance you're gonna be killing a lot of enemies with this card. So having three copies means, hopefully this will be three dead enemies that I don't have to worry about. Hail Stones, uh, a really nice card for direct damage. Uh, it's cheap with a cost of one and reads action, exhaust X characters to deal X damage to an enemy in the staging area. So if you have some allies out between you and your partner, you can exhaust those characters to, even if you exhaust only three, uh, three allies, considering you're doing three damage to an enemy that will already have one damage taken off of it, that's gonna take out most enemies. And if you consider a lot of enemies in the staging area may have a threat of perhaps four or five, um, so you're not going to need those characters for questing because you'll be removing five threat from the staging area by killing it off with Hail of Stones. So for any of those really big enemies as well with a really high defense, this can be a way to pile up some damage on it and take it out. So I wasn't sure about this card when I first put it in, but I've used it many, many times uh, and it's saved us on multiple occasions. Now Foe Hammer uh, is a great card for card draw. It's free. Uh, which is handy, so whenever you attack and destroy an enemy, which hopefully is happening quite regularly, uh, all you have to do is exhaust a weapon to draw three cards. So this could be the Revendell Blade, this could be the Great U-Bow, um, but you just exhaust it and three extra cards. That will also free up Gandalf, hopefully, to do direct damage instead of having to use his card draw ability. So it's in the events, too, that kind of plays a bit more into this idea of doing direct damage. Uh, especially with this card here. So, Goblin Cleaver, we have three copies of. Exhaust a weapon card, and you get to choose an enemy engaged with you. Deal two damage to that enemy, three instead if the enemy is an orc. So this is excellent. Uh, when you start pairing this card uh, with Fallon's ability and with Spear of the Citadel, uh, you're going to be doing potentially three or four damage. Uh, it can be really nice for taking out a lot of enemies. All right, I have three copies of Behind Strong Walls. This is primarily meant um, for Baragond. 
So ready a defending Gondor character, that character gets plus one defense to the end of the phase. So this is going to allow you to block one enemy um, with Baragond at six defense and then hopefully block a second at seven defense. So if you've got something with just nasty attack values, hopefully with seven defense you're going to be able to take care of it. If you have Spear of the Citadel attached, that's two enemies that again you're going to be able to do one damage to, uh, which is nice. Two copies of Faint. So that's going to let you to um, prevent two attacks, always handy. One copy of Swift Strike. So after a character is declared a defender, deal two damage to the attacking enemy. If again you, you pair this with Spear of the Citadel, you're going to be doing three damage to that enemy. And finally, two copies of Quick Strike. Exhaust a character you control, immediately declare it as an attacker against an en eligible enemy target. So this is almost just a preemptive, it's, it's attacking and it's defensive, because hopefully you can kill an enemy before it gets a chance to attack you. And given that hopefully you've done some direct damage to it, it shouldn't be too hard to take out. So there you have a look at my direct damage deck. It is meant to be paired with another deck, a more supporting deck, which we will talk about next time. So stay tuned, these decks are sort of meant to be played together. Keep in mind, uh, I have one copy of basically everything for this game. So I have one core set, I have one of all of the bigger boxes expansions. So I do not own multiple core sets, which is why I'm simply working with the cards that you could only get by buying one of each expansion. Um, please feel free to leave any comments uh, if there's any suggestions. Um, for alterations that you would maybe make if you were playing a deck like this or any other decks that you find that are good at direct damage. But I've found this is an excellent deck. Um, it's very versatile in that we've gotten through tons of different quests with it and I find the direct damage theme is powerful um, because often Fantasy Flight, they just increase defense values to make a lot of the enemies stronger. So by bypassing that defense value, um, really makes enemies a lot easier to deal with. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this useful and maybe this is a deck you can try out and let me know how it goes for you. Uh, have a great week and I'll see you next week with another deck tech for part two. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>